Thank you very much. I'm Joe Sestak, and I did wear the cloth of our country for over 31 years, in peace and in war. I remember walking out of the Pentagon, just a few minutes later, I had to come back to look at the scar that the plane had made on 9-11 into that building. Within a month or two, or a few months later, I was over there on the ground in Afghanistan, head of the Navy's strategic anti-terrorism unit, for a very brief period, and then I came out and took command of an aircraft carrier battle group to begin our strikes in that battle group against Afghanistan and the Taliban. I enjoyed my time in the Navy. On board that carrier, 5,000 sailors, their average age, 19 and a half. If you don't believe the youth of America are great, come aboard an aircraft carrier and watch them. I began that career for three years, having, in, working with, in charge of the plumbers, the welders, the ship fitters. I had the electricians, the interior communications men, the cable people, the firefighters. That's where I come from, and I've never forgotten. But then, as I came back from the war, a short time later, I stood there in Walter Reed Military Hospital as they rolled my only but my very young four-year-old child out of surgery. We couldn't get the brain cancer, they said. And when I asked what it meant and what it was, they said, we think it's glioblastoma, which as you may know is what John McCain had. And they said she probably has about 90 days. But you gave us something that is so priceless. You gave us a military plan, in the, a health care plan in the military where I could take her where she needed to be. And I took her to children. They flew a special surgeon down from Mass General and that little warrior is here today because of you. So I left the military. I was an independent, which I think the military should be. And I became a Democrat in a nearly two to one Republican district. I ran on one campaign refrain. I'm a retired Navy Admiral running on national security that begins at home in health security. And both Democrat and Republican alike made me the second Democratic congressman since the Civil War. But what I'm most proud of, even though I had a congressional record, which was an F from the NRA, or a 95% for human rights record, and 97% from AFL-CIO, that also, I was reelected by 20 points in that nearly two to one Republican district without spending a penny, not one cent, of my $3 million on any campaign ads whatsoever. We had somehow learned, like we do in the military, like unions do, to disagree well. But I also knew that I needed to stand for the principles that I had, even when my party, I felt, was wrong. And so when the president on down endorsed someone who left the Republican Party because he could not any longer win there. And my party endorsed Republican turned Democrat, Arlen Specter, some of you may remember. The man who had, with the acquiescence of the chair, almost, of that, part, of that Judiciary Committee that permitted him to try to humiliate Anita Hill. What should have been and what came became the year of the woman, which should have been the year for women, never happened. I disagreed, and I ran against my party's desires from the president on down that I felt this was not the gentleman that would represent the principles that I thought America, not just my party, should stand for. Forty points down, we won because the people, Republicans and Democrats, agreed. I narrowly lost the general election, but it was all right because I had succeeded in the one reason I had run to become in Congress when the Affordable Care Act was passed. Nothing else mattered as much as that because I owed this country. I had learned integrity's values in the military, service to others, to country, above self, with accountability and answering for oneself. So as I get into union issues to end, let me introduce just a short story to let you know where I've stood always. 
much like the AFL-CIO does. It's not unions. You stand for the working family. Read the charter as all of you have, where it says AFL-CIO stands for the working family. You are the last organized force in America to stand for them. It's not unions. They are a means to support working families, just like I would work for those artisans who on my first tour who work with their hands as well as their minds. So come back aboard that aircraft carrier with his 5,000 sailors. They run a nuclear reactor. They fix your plane before you get it in, and no one asks a question. They know, whether you're Hispanic, Muslim, or white, that they've done it right. And then you sit in that plane, engines are turned on, they strap you with a metal rod down to the sled, a whip, a sling that will fling you into the air. There's no ride, not even the amusement park down the street that has any ride like that. But sometimes they say, just before you're about to go out the gate, you're sitting there and the plane is rocking like this, just like a horse waiting to get out of the gate of the Kentucky Derby. And they suddenly say, flight deck freeze. There's been an ambush. We need a different plane overseas. And then you see what America most yearns for today. A young youth will come out on that deck. Could be from Iowa, Pennsylvania, blue or red state. It doesn't matter. They come out and unhook that rod under the plane where the pilot can't see because no pilot's going to turn off their plane. So they know they've been unhooked from that catapult. Because if you do and they push that button, you're going off for a fine, but it's your final ride of your life. And then that youth goes to the side of the plane and stands there and looks up. No, not at the side, in front of that plane. And gives that very simple signal like this. And doesn't move until that pilot has turned off his or her engine opened up the canopy and got safely on deck. And that youth has said everything this nation most yearns for. Go ahead, pilot, you can trust me. Because I am willing to be accountable to you, not for my word, but for my deed. And if suddenly I made a mistake and you start heading overboard to your death after you turn off your engines, you're going right through me. And I'm going overboard with you to my own death. No one that I know believes anyone in Washington, D.C. would stand in, in front of that plane for them. I want to. If we do not unite this country, there is no way that we will ever move America forward again. The agenda is long, as John F. Kennedy once said, but the hour is late. My daughter's brain cancer came back last year. I had no intention of getting in. But as I watch what is happening to this nation by both sides, I am running for one reason, to unite this country. Or we cannot move policies forward again. Take what's happening on the tariffs. There are nations that are things that are needed. We can't do scattershot tariffs. Is the president right? There's a problem with an illiberal might makes right China. Done right he is. But you do it by convening the world like Ronald Reagan did against Japan and brought through the World Trade Organization, restructured the ability to make sure that they stop their unjust actions. We don't do it alone. That's why the sculpture closest to the Oval Office is not of an American, but of a foreigner, to remind us we want our freedom because of General Rauschenbaum at the Battle of Yorktown. Second, OSHA. We haven't even had a change since 1970 on it. 5,000 workers last year and this year will lose their life on the job. If you work in a popcorn factory, it's like inhaling acid. And we've done nothing to help the 50,000 who die every year because over time, chemical explosions harms them. Minimum wage, of course. What should it be today? If you analyze it, then you see it should be $14 today, moving with inflation. As workers' wage, the average is only, it moves up. It moves up to $15. We truly must move this nation forward. It's why I supported the Little Lead Better Fair Pay Act, just like in the military. We have women steps aboard that very first day. She gets equal pay. And then we must make sure we have my favorite program, training for a lifetime. When that coal miner loses his job or that tractor, which are now going to be wireless here, what happens to her when she loses her tractor job? We spend less than any developed nation on training in this nation. 2% of those who go to college have a debt over $50,000. We can fix that problem 
But how about those who work with their hands and their minds, the Trump supporter and the Clinton supporter? How can we not have a program that takes care of them like we do in the military? You learn one's trade, and then you want to be a MIG welder instead of a TIG welder, we send you to the Air Force Community College. And you're trained and retrained. Your plane goes away in F-15 to learn the F-22. That's what we do, and we don't do that for you, the workers. But I am running most because this nation needs someone who people know is accountable to them, above self, above party, above any special interest. As John McCain told me, and you probably now know, he called me one day and said, as I used to run for Senate, hey, Joe, I saw you on television. You're still too long. Keep it shorter. To a united America, thank you.